Hello there, and welcome to this rundown of my rig, or battle station, or workplace. I often get people asking in comments what my PC specs are and what I use for this, that and the other, so in this video I'm going to detail all of that with the help of Logitech G, who have sponsored this video. They sent me a bunch of cool stuff to try out, so I'm going to show you some of that, what it can do, and tell you why I love Logitech products, because I've been using them for probably five years or so, I've been using them for a long time, and they never fail to impress with a lot of good industry innovation. Anyway, let's get on with it. So this is it, the place where I play all my games, make all my videos, do all my streams. This is it. It's all very black, which was never the intention. I actually wanted like a dark brown desk, but I also wanted a sit stand desk so I could stand up sometimes and there was none of those in dark brown that weren't ridiculously expensive. So I opted for a less expensive tidy black one. Okay, let's start off with the all-important keyboard. I'm using the Logitech G915. This is a wireless light speed keyboard. Light speed is Logitech's wireless technology, which is just as fast as being wired. It's pretty awesome. It's low profile, mechanical switches. It's nice and thin. It's got brushed metal finish on it. it looks really nice. RGB, as you can see, which is all customizable. We'll get to that a bit later on though. It just has a whole bunch of useful features like the volume scroll wheel. You can control your volume quickly and easily with this. I find this so freaking useful. It was missing from my previous keyboard, which I really hated because I had it on my keyboard before that. So it's nice to have this back. You've also got the media buttons below it there. And at the other end of the keyboard on the far left, you've got the 5G keys. These are basically extra customizable buttons. You can assign them to whatever you want. Super handy to have next to your WASD hand. And you've also got three profiles for them. You can see the buttons I was pushing at the top. So it's basically like you have 15 extra keys next to your WASD hand. You've also got macro record, so you can quickly make macros and assign them to one of those keys in a pinch. So a really nice keyboard to use, great with the wireless, it's just nice to not have that extra wire floating around and to have the freedom to move it or take it out of the way if I want the desk space. Or you can use Bluetooth with it, take it somewhere else, use it with a laptop, use it with a tablet. Wireless itself is great, zero problems with latency or anything like that, it's literally the same as having a wired keyboard. And you may think that battery life might be a problem with a wireless keyboard that has RGB, but oh no, it can last a good old while. I charge it maybe once every two weeks, probably. I don't have any crazy RGB though. If you use big bright RGB all the time, then that does suck the battery life. But for the most part, it lasts really well. So that's the G915, a wonderful keyboard, albeit quite an expensive one. The keyboard I was using before this is the G513, which is also a really nice keyboard, although lacking in the features. The keys feel a bit nicer on this one though than the G915. It is wired though, so you do have to watch out for orc war bosses trying to snip the cable with their power claw. A problem I often have. So do check out some Logitech keyboards, especially the G915 if you want to fork out for it. And I actually use the wrist rest from the 513, which you can see here. I use it with the G915 as it's just nice and damn comfortable. The next important part of my rig is Julius Caesar, who watches over me while I play Total War to make sure that my strategy is on point. My microphone that I use for videos and streams is the old Blue Yeti, pretty much the industry standard for YouTubers, a very popular microphone, and with good reason, it is damn good, as you can hear right now. Other stuff on this side of the desk, I've got the C920 Logitech camera, which I've had for years, and just a light for when I'm streaming, all on arm so I can just swivel them in when I need them. My main monitor is a Dell S2716DG, 1440p, 1ms, 144Hz, G-Sync, all the trimmings. I went all out for this monitor a few years ago. Cost me about £400 and I actually got really lucky with it because nobody really seemed to know about this monitor and then suddenly everyone discovered it and then they made it way more expensive by like £150. So I caught it while it was cheap. But yeah, great monitor that served me well and will probably serve me for a few more years before I maybe decide to jump up to 4K. We'll see. But for now, this is doing me proud. And my monitor is protected by my Orc War Boss, a Black Orc Big Boss, and some Orc Commandos, because every monitor needs protection. And no, I didn't paint them. My second monitor is just a cheap 24-inch BenQ monitor, 1080p. Nothing too special about this, I just wanted a cheap second monitor. Does the job though, the colours are a bit nicer because it's an IPS panel over the TN panel you can see on my other monitor. But it's doing its job for now well enough. On to the all-important mouse, and I'm using the same mouse that I've been using for the past four or five years, just in a slightly different form, the G502. For many years, I used the wired version of this mouse, which I've always been a huge fan of. About six months ago, I took the plunge and decided to pay out for the Lightspeed wireless version, and I have not looked back even a little bit. 
Much like the wireless keyboard, it is packed with features. The Lightspeed Wireless, first of all. A lot of skepticism is held around wireless mice and that they're not as fast as a wired mouse, which just isn't true with Logitech's Lightspeed technology. And if you don't believe it, you can go and look at the gear lists of eSports pro players of Overwatch or Counter-Strike, and you'll see a lot of them using wireless Logitech mice because they're just exactly the same as a wired mouse, but without the hindrance of a wire. The design of the mouse is a little bit spaceshipy, but it's super comfortable, got a nice little rest for your thumb. You've got two buttons by the side of your thumb, two near your index finger, so you've got loads of customizable buttons. I use these a hell of a lot in all kinds of games, super handy to have there. A left and right mouse button, incredible innovation again. The mouse wheel can be pushed down as a mouse wheel button, but can also be pushed to the left as a mouse button and to the right as another mouse button. So your mouse wheel is three buttons in one. Again, all customizable, so freaking useful, I can't even tell you. And the mouse wheel itself has Logitech's hyper scroll technology. So you can use it as a normal scroll wheel and it moves a little bit at a time in increments, like every other mouse in the world, right? But if you hit the button just below it, you will unlock the mouse wheel, allowing it to spin freely for a good while, which is super handy if in Total War, for example, you scroll your mouse three or four times to zoom all the way out. Well, with this, you can zoom out in about a second with one spin, and then you can just lock it back up if you want to. Again, just a super handy feature with some nice practical uses. So if anyone ever asks me what mouse I recommend, I always say the G502. It's my favorite. I've used it for years. I'll probably use it for a lot longer. I don't know what else I need from a mouse. The light speed version is a great investment. It is quite expensive at £130, but it's totally worth it in my eyes if you're going to use it a lot. I actually got mine in a sale, I think, for around £90. And there is the wired version if you want to go cheaper. For now, you just have the wire. That's about £50 brand new, and I think you can get them for around £30 in a sale. So if you're in the market for a new mouse, go G502, baby. You won't regret it. I also have my mouse set up with three different profiles for different things, but we'll get to that in a second when we look at Logitech G Hub. Logitech also kindly sent me the G903, which is actually very similar to the 502. I wanted to try this mouse out because it has buttons on the other side of the mouse. And I always think, well, I've got two fingers on the right side of my mouse, not really doing anything. It'd be good to try and use them at something. So I wanted to try this mouse out, but I found I actually still prefer the G502. But if you're a lefty, this mouse is better for you because the G502 is only right-handed, I believe where the G903 can be left or right-handed. It has pretty much all the same features, except the mouse buttons on the sides can be removed if you want to. So if you only want to have two on one side, you can do that. It has the light speed technology, wireless again. It's got the awesome mouse wheel, which is three buttons in one and has the hyper scroll feature. You've also got a couple of DPI shift buttons, which are all customizable to something else if you prefer or to change your profiles. Again, just a mouse packed with features ambidextrous if you're a lefty and I think it's a little bit cheaper than a G502 for the wireless version as well so could be good there if you're looking to save a little bit of money and the mouse mat I'm using with these is the G640 mouse mat good simple mouse mat does the job perfectly and I was offered the wireless charging mouse mat so you never have to charge it but honestly I didn't feel like I need it I charge it every two or three weeks and I use it for god knows how many hours a day the battery life is just not a problem and when you do need to charge it you plug it in for a few hours it's a wired mouse again but then you'll quickly be back to wireless for the next three weeks. So battery life, zero problems. For my headset, I'm rocking the Logitech Pro X Wireless. It's got that light speed wireless technology again on your audio now. Audio sound is great overall, great for directional stuff in shooter games, and you can mess around with all the sound in G-Hub to EQ it how you like. The mic's great and is detachable as well, which is really handy. Isn't that right, me? So a wonderful investment if you want a top of the line headset with the freedom of wireless. Now let us take a browse into G-Hub, the app that lets you control all of your Logitech gear, customizing as you see fit. So starting with the mouse, you can control all the RGB light stuff. I only have the logo on, there are some other buttons on the side, but I turn those off just to save power. There's a bunch of different effects that you can have. You can change the color, you can control the speed of it. And then we have assignments. This is where you can customize all your buttons and decide what they do. Tailor it to exactly how you like it for all your different profiles for different games. This is the kind of thing I personally love customizing a profile to get it smooth and efficient for the task at hand, whatever that may be. I've got three different profiles, one for strategy games, which is mostly when I'm playing Total War, one for FPS games, which has a few changes to make FPS games a bit smoother, and one for video editing in Premiere Pro. There's lots of shortcuts and things to use for that, so I've created a few macros to help out with that. And you can assign pretty much anything to these keys. You can get Discord if you want to have a Discord mute button. You probably want that on your keyboard more than your mouse, but you have the option if you want it. A few macros there, good. If I need to push two keys at the same time, I can do it with one instead. So yeah, unlimited options for your 11 customizable buttons. 
And then you've got sensitivity for all your DPI needs. I mostly use 3500 as my base sensitivity. If I'm playing a shooter game or I'm trying to make a finer movement in editing, I'll drop down to 800 and that just makes the mouse move a little bit less, helping finer movements. And you can have separate ones for separate profiles as I do and more speeds if you want to. You could have five different DPI settings and you can go all the way up to 16,000 DPI, which is super high sensitivity, but the options there with the fancy hero sensor, you can set it up how you like. And you can have a button on the mouse as well for cycling through your DPI speeds as I do, or you could have an up and down button for your DPI instead. Now onto the keyboard where the light show can really begin. This is obviously where the RGB stuff shines. I'm currently using the freestyle profile, which means I can basically paint the keyboard however I want. So if I want to make all these keys blue, I can. I don't really want to because it looks ridiculous. So I'm going to have to change that back to white now, but you can set it up however you want. If you want to have every key a different color, you can. If you want to write your name on the keyboard, you can. I've just got a fairly simple setup of all white keys with a few accented with green, as you can see. There are a lot of fancy presets though, such as the old color wave, as you saw earlier. If you're into the rainbowy effects, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Breathing, where the keyboard will look like it's kind of breathing color. A nice effect, you can of course change that color and the rate at which it pulses. Echo press is quite nice too. You have one color of the keyboard and when you press a key, they change to the other color. These are the keys I'm pressing on the keyboard at the moment. You can see them changing and they fade away back to the original color. And again, you can change the colors, change the speed, do what you like. And then there's a few more fancy ones like screen sampler. So this is interesting. It takes the light from your screen, whatever is on your screen at the time. In my case, it's a lot of black. It'll take the colors from the screen and apply them over the keyboard. You can choose what area it does that from. You can do a smaller area, a bigger area. Obviously, everything's very black at the moment, so it's mostly black, bit of gray and blue now. And it'll change depending on where you are. So if you're in a grassy environment, it'll be kind of green. And then you move over into a desert, it'll go kind of yellowy and sandy colored. So it's a nice, interesting piece of technology. There's audio visualizer as well, which will throw colors around in time with the audio of whatever you're doing. And another cool feature of all this actually is that you can have different profiles for different things that you do. Currently, I have it disabled and I'm just using my three. But if you want to have a different profile for every game that starts up when you play that game, you can. So if I want to set my mouse, keyboard and headset up a certain way, when I play Dark Souls, it'll activate when I play Dark Souls. When I come off, it'll go back to my desktop profile. And there's also light sync stuff where a game is synced with Logitech gear. So for example, in Battlefield 1, if I've taken loads of damage and I'm about to die, my keyboard will start to flash red to let me know I'm in danger. And then it'll go back to normal when my health recovers and things like that. There's one for Total War Warhammer 2 as well. So there's endless customization options for all your different profiles or games. Then for the keyboard customizing of the keys, you've got the 5G keys down the side. Currently, I haven't set these all up yet myself, but again, you can assign them to whatever you want. You just drag it on, and now that is the undo button if I want it to be an undo button. So again, I could have one for strategy games, one for FPS games, one for video editing, just to make things a little bit quicker, and I've got them right next to my WASD nice and quick. And again, you've got three profiles for each of those as well. You also have the game mode button, which when you press it will turn off the Windows keys, which if you accidentally press them in a game, as you know, will bring up your Windows menu, which can be very annoying. And again, you can customize it to turn off whichever keys you do or don't want. So again, as I keep saying, endless amounts of customization to set it up however the hell you like. There's just so many options in here that there's really whatever you want. I still have a lot of stuff left to set up, but what I have done so far is still incredibly useful. On to the Pro X headset then, with all the sound options, a nerd could probably want. You can get proper into the advanced EQ stuff if you want to, if you know your sound design. There's a whole bunch of preset profiles in there as well. You've got the surround sound, which you can mess around with. You can change the volume. If you want the sounds behind you to be a bit louder, you can. You've got different profiles for different things here as well. Just so many options with the sound. Honestly, a lot of things I still haven't even messed with yet, so lots to explore. And then you've got the microphone, which is made with Blue Voice, the same company that makes my Blue Yeti and all of the great microphones. Logitech owns them now, so Blue Voice is on the microphone. You can mess with this. Again, loads of presets. You can listen to it back, make sure you get it all right. And with all of this stuff as well, there is profiles made by people. So if you've got a favorite person and they happen to have made a Logitech profile, you can get the setup that they use. Hey, maybe I'll make one for Total War. Then you can download it, get a stick on beard if you don't already have one. Then just talk in an English accent, then just bang on about, ooh, stats and stuff, melee attack, oh, of course, of course. And then you'll just be me. Brilliant. I'll get that done. So that's Logitech G Hub that you can download for free when you have any Logitech gear. You can get it at any time. You don't even have to have Logitech gear, but it won't be much use without Logitech gear. So purchase some gear first and then download G Hub, and then you can unlock the true potential power of your weapon of choice. Now to my war machine itself. My case, first of all, is a Fractal Meshify C. It's a nice, simple case. I'm not a big fan of spaceship-designed PC cases myself, so this has perfect looks for me. 
It does have a kind of stylish angled front plate though, which you can't really see from my footage here, but it's pretty tidy. It's a nice wide case as well. I don't really have to worry about if anything's going to fit or not. It's got great ventilation, vents all over the gaff on it. It's just a wonderful case. It does have one glass side on it, which I'm not too fussed about. I'm not going to show you the inside because honestly, it's not that exciting. I don't really mess around with RGB. I'm not really interested in the looks of the inside of my PC. So it probably looks like the inside of most people's PC. Hardware wise though, I've got a Ryzen 3900X, which I've only had for a few months. Before that, I had an i7-7700K. So most of my videos that you've watched are probably on the 7700, but anything you've watched recently or in the future is on the 3900X. The Ryzen is just better for multitasking, which is good for me, for video editing, for streaming. I found big improvements to both those things since upgrading. My motherboard is an MSI X470 Gaming Plus Max. Pretty simple motherboard, nothing too fancy to be honest. I just wanted something that wasn't too expensive and did the job. Has a nice amount of USB ports, which is handy. And for my cooler, I've got a Dark Rock Pro 4. For my RAM, I've got 32 gigabytes of Corsair, 3200 hertz. And my graphics card is an MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X. Although I am looking to upgrade soon to the new 3080. It's all powered by an EVGA 650 watt Platinum PSU. Although I'm going to have to upgrade that for the 3080 anyway. I think that's about it for the exciting stuff in there. A couple of SSDs and M.2. Yada yada. My chair, honestly, is just a quite simple ergonomic office chair, nothing too fancy. Not a big fan of the idea of gaming chairs. A lot of them have very flat backs, which definitely isn't good for your back. So don't buy into the whole gaming chair nonsense. Get an ergonomic chair. Although don't buy this one because the back of it is quite short and my shoulders do hang over it, but it's fine. Definitely in need of an upgrade at some point though. So there it is, my battle rig in all of its glory. Thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this video and affording me some sweet goods to show you good people. If you're interested in checking out any of this stuff, I'll put links in the description to various Amazons in different countries. And of course, you can check it out all on Logitech G's website, which will also be linked. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.